So whenever we give a patient the diagnosis of breast cancer, they think that it is only one diagnosis, that there's only one type of breast cancer, but that's not true. We classify breast cancers according to certain profiles of markers, which are hormone markers, which are called estrogen and progesterone receptor markers. Then they are also qualified according to the presence of a receptor on the surface which is called the HER2 receptor and these are the common uh, different types of receptors that are used to define different types of breast cancers. So traditionally we can broadly classify breast cancers into those that are hormone sensitive and those that are not hormone sensitive. Hormone sensitive cancers feed on the female hormone estrogen and that is why treatments for such cancers also involve blocking the female hormone and making a lady postmenopausal to give her the best chance of cure. The other type of cancers are hormone receptor negative cancers which do not depend on estrogen for their growth. Then there are the HER2 positive cancers which have overexpression of a protein called HER2 new and for them targeted type of chemotherapy treatments are available and it is important for us to know these different types of can breast cancers because treatments differ with these different types of breast cancers. So most breast cancers will have the same type of symptoms and signs. Only there is a rare type of breast cancer which is called inflammatory breast cancer in which there is associated redness of the skin of the breast like an infection or an inflammation that is why it is called inflammatory breast cancer. Also there is a type of breast cancer called Paget's disease in which the nipple is involved and there is an ulcer on the nipple which keeps getting doesn't heal so a non-healing ulcer on the nipple so that is a rare presentation also but other than that the common symptoms and signs of breast cancer which is a painless lump in the breast discharge from the nipple which could be watery or blood stain tethering of the skin or dimpling of the skin and lumps in the armpit those are the common symptoms of all different types of breast cancer that are most common are ductal cancers those that arise within the ducts that carry the milk to the nipple there are other type of cancers that arise within the milk lobules which are called lobular cancers and there can also be certain cancers which are not specific to breast like lymphomas which can grow within the breast and also certain types of cancers which arise from the fibrous structure of the breast and uh, these are also treated in a different way. Now when we talk of which cancer is the most dangerous I don't think there is that is the right way to put it because treatment depends a lot on the stage at which a patient has come. So even with certain very aggressive cancers, we know that if the patient comes in time, then their success rate is, is very high. And sometimes even with very good natured cancers, if the patient comes in stage four when the disease has spread in the body, then even a good natured cancer can become dangerous. So with modern treatments that are available, if a patient comes in time, then most cancers carry a very high rate of cure and the word dangerous is probably not the right word to use. Then. Yes, it is possible. Some cancers in the breast, rather than being just one cancer, there might be multiple cancers within the same breast that we call multifocal or multicentric disease or there might be cancer present in the other breast at the same time, something that we call bilateral breast cancer. And it is possible that these different cancers are of different nature. But commonly we see that it is the same type of cancer that presents in a patient at the same time. So when we talk of breast cancer, it's, it's, it all comes under the umbrella of common diagnostics. So a mammogram, ultrasound, needle biopsy, MRI, when needed a PET CT scan. These are done for all different types of cancers. However, for certain cancers, we may want to do extra markers uh, in the pathology lab. Like for a patient who has ERPR and HER2 new negative, which is a triple negative cancer, we may want to do an advanced test called PDL1 in the lab. So these are the um, kind of different tests that may be needed. But as a routine, the common tests that are done are as part of triple assessment. Breast cancer treatments have advanced hugely, right from the time of prevention to diagnostics to final treatment. 
So when we talk about prevention, we are able to nowadays determine through a simple blood test whether a patient or a woman is at a high risk of developing breast cancer. So before she develops the breast cancer, we can offer the woman risk reducing strategies which could be in the form of surgery or medication. So this is preventive part. Then coming on to diagnostics, there is huge advancement now with the normally the 2D mammogram that we used to do. Now we have TOMO or 3D mammogram. We have advanced contrast MRI for the breast and these allow us to pick up the smallest cancer as small as 2 millimeter or 3 millimeter which cannot even be felt by the hand. Again, there are now very different methods of biopsy that are available. So initially only a fine needle aspirate used to be done for breast tumors but now we have the state of the art true cut biopsies which can be done either through a simple needle or by attaching it to a vacuum assisted biopsy machine through which larger amounts of tissue can be taken out to give us a more confirmed diagnosis. Then coming on to treatments, the surgical, the chemotherapy and radiation oncology treatments have advanced hugely. Surgically, we are able to preserve more and more breasts now through oncoplastic breast surgical procedures. We have very good methods of reconstruction available for women who need to have the whole breast removed. Chemotherapy wise also, more and more targeted treatments are now available. So for a patient who is HER2 new positive, targeted treatment in the form of Herceptin, which is Trastuzumab and Pertuzumab are now available. For triple negative patients, we have immune therapy, which is available for those patients now. And also the side effects of chemotherapy are much lesser due to the better treatments that we can give patients for controlling these side effects. Radiation treatments have also become highly focused and the side effects of radiotherapy that we used to see 4-5 decades ago have now gone down because it is all computer aided. So yes, breast cancer treatments have come a long way. However, we have to understand one thing. If we do not come in time, no amount of advanced treatments can help you. So early detection still remains the key for cure from breast cancer.